In today's artificial intelligence class, we will start our fourth unit, natural language communication. Under this, the first topic is phrase structure grammar. In this phrase structure grammar, we will see the generative capacity. Under this, we will see the different grammars. Okay. A recursively enumerable grammar, context sensitive grammar, context free grammar, regular grammar, and probabilistic context free grammar. After that, we will see the lexicon for the language E0 and the grammar for the language E0, and we will generate a past tree for a sentence. After that, the over generation and gen uh, under generation of a grammar. So, these are the topic we will see in today's class. A phrase structure grammar. First, let us see what is grammar. Grammar is a collection of rules that defines the language as a set of allowable string of words. Okay, this is called as grammar. If we take language, every language, any language, there is a, a set of alphabets. Set of alphabets. For example, if it is English, then we are having A to Z. Okay, these are alphabets. And the combination of these alphabet will form words and the combination of words will form sentences. Okay, so for constructing the words and sentences, rules are there. Those rules are called as the grammar. Okay, so rules are allowable characters, words and sentences. Okay, for every language, there should be a limited set of characters and words and sentences right so this is called as grammar when come to lexical category so lexical means uh, individual word words are called as lexicons okay so it is otherwise called as part of speech for example noun adjective pronoun verb and uh, proposition everything are called as lexicons that is allowable words in a grammar and the next one is syntactic category here the words are strings together uh, the lexical categories such as noun phrase and verb phrase okay uh, noun phrase and verb phrase are syntactic categories that is how to construct the word, sentence by using the word is called as syntactic category and next one is phrase structure see here uh, the combine these syntactic categories into tree representation okay so the tree representation of given sentence is called as phrase structure okay generative capacity the grammatical formalism can be classified by their generative capacity that means the set of languages that can be represented is called as generative capacity so there are four important class of languages are there based on the hierarchy the first one is recursively enumerable okay that is turing machine and the context sensitive grammar this is also a Turing machine okay so the outer circle is called as uh, the recursively enumerable language and recursive language okay so that is context sensitive uh, grammar so these two are Turing machines and next one is context free grammar this is push down automata here and the regular grammar that is finite state machine okay regular grammar recursively enumerable grammars it uses unrestricted rules okay that means in the rule both sides any number of terminal and non-terminal symbols may come okay so for this rule in the left hand side three non-terminal and right hand side two non-terminal okay so there is no restriction for this rule and it is equivalent to turing machine in their expressive power okay so this is enumerable uh, that is recursively enumerable language it is unrestricted grammar that means both sides any number of non-terminal and terminal symbols may come and it accepts turing machine right context sensitive grammar and these grammars restricted only the right hand side um, that must contain at least as many symbols as the left hand side okay for example this is our rule in this rule 
the left hand side symbols should be equal to right hand side symbols. Okay, here x will be rewritten as y. That is, in the f x in the left hand side uh, should be rewritten to y as the right hand side, and a and b will come as it is. Okay, first a will come, following by b will come here. And when come to context sensitive grammar, it represent the language such as a power n, b power n, c power n. That is, a a n number of a followed by n number of b followed by n number of c this is the example for this okay three a's three b's and three c's so this is acceptable string for this given language context free grammar which is otherwise called as cfg here the left hand side consists of single non terminal and right hand side any context for example a such that S A R A A B. Okay. So here left hand side is only single non terminal and right hand side any combination may come. So this is called as context free grammar. Okay. It is very popular for natural language processing as well as the programming language grammar that is formal language grammars and it is widely accepted one. The accepted con uh, context free grammar represent as a power n, b power n, but not a power n, b power n, c power n. Okay. Uh, regular grammar. These grammars are most restricted class. Here, every rule uh, having a single non terminal on the left hand side and um, a symbol. That is a terminal symbol optionally followed by non-terminal on the right hand side. For example, A followed by A, A, R, B, B. Okay. So, this is a sample regular grammar. Okay. Left hand side only a non-terminal and right hand side a terminal followed by a non-terminal. Okay. Optionally followed. Here. A regular grammars are equivalent to finite state machines and they are poorly suited for programming languages because they cannot represent the construct as balanced opening and closing parentheses. Okay, there is no balance for open parentheses and the number of closing parentheses. Hence, it is not suitable for programming languages. Okay, and suppose if can represent a star um, b star that means any number of a's followed by any number of b's okay here for example 4 a's followed by 6 b's right so this is not suited for programming languages but this is very well suited for natural language uh, the probabilistic context free grammar that is pcfg and this language model is based on phrase structure and uh, the term context free means left hand side consists of single non terminal symbol and the probabilistic this one probabilistic means the grammar assigns a probability to every string okay so this is probabilistic context free grammar okay this grammar refers a non terminal symbol and terminal symbols both are there and let us see one example for this probabilistic context free grammar vp followed by such that web of 0.7 or web phrase noun phrase of 0.3 here this vp and np are called as non terminals okay vp means web phrase and np means noun phrase are non terminal and the actual words are called as terminal symbols the actual words in the english sentence are called as terminal symbols and this particular rule this particular rule says uh, with the probability 0.7 a verb phrase consists of verb okay simply verb that will come 0.7 70% 70 and the probability 0 0.30 it is verb that is verb phrase followed by noun phrase.
the lexicon of language E not. E means English. English because we are uh, handling the natural language processing. Okay, let us take English as our example. That is E not. Okay, here lexicon means list of allowable words. That is list of allowable words in English language. And the words are grouped into lexical categories. Okay, familiar to dictionary users. Okay, what are the lexical categories we are having? Nouns, pronouns and names. These are denoted to other things, isn't it? And verbs. Verbs are denoted events and adjectives to modify nouns and adverbs to modify verbs okay and some functional words are also there articles the a are articles propositions are for example in conjunctions and okay these are function words and this diagram gives the general lexical categories of english language okay there are 11 categories are there okay for example uh, noun snitch breeze wampus pits are nouns and the word followed by the number which which is given in square bracket isn't it so this is nothing but the probability of this particular word in the language okay 0 0.05 is snitch right for all those uh, words, there is a probability, okay? In From this example, each category ends with triple dot, okay? That means the other words may also come here, right? And uh, for example, these categories are endless categories. That means more number of words will come here that may be tens of thousands of numbers uh, may come in each of these classes. Uh, these five categories, that is noun, names, verbs, adverbs, adjectives. And these five categories are called as open classes. Open classes means there are more number of words will come here. That is tens of hundreds of uh, thousand words will come here. And the other categories like pronoun, relative pronoun, article, proposition, conjunction and these are called as closed classes. That means in this uh, class, a small number of words will come here. For example, some of uh, dozens or uh, very limited number of words will come under closed categories. And some words are there. Uh, those are the, to. These are used only in the poems. Okay, and that may be used in 17th uh, to 19th century. And uh, now almost these words are not used in normal English, English uh, sentences. Okay, and these also will come under closed classes. So closed classes means very limited number of words will be there. And when come to open classes, more number of words will come here. Uh, the grammar of E0. E0 is nothing but a language, for example, English. And to construct a sentence, we have to follow some rules and that rule is called as grammar. Here, the syntax. Okay, syntax is nothing but rule to construct a sentence. Okay, here, six categories are there. The first one is starting symbol or sentence and noun phrase, verb phrase, adjectives proposition and relational class okay so these are six categories of sentences and here these are non-terminal and this is probability probability and this is terminal symbols terminal symbols here the terminal symbols are the original words original words the grammatical representation will come under the non terminal symbols okay non terminal symbols right uh, next let us uh, generate the parse tree by using the given sentence every bumpers smells and here we have to follow the synthetic rules um, 
for example, yes, yes is NP followed by VP. Okay, NP followed by VP. And this is the interior node which is labeled with the probability. Okay, the probability is given here also 0 0.90. And when come to NP, the NP may be, see, NP may be article noun. See, article noun is here. Okay, article here. The equivalent article is every and noun is wampus. When come to website, web phrase, web phrase may be a single web. See, web phrase may be a single web that is smells. Okay, for every non-terminal, there is a probability. Equivalent probability is given in the uh, table itself. Right? So, accordingly, we have to select the corresponding probability so that we can compute the probability of the entire sentence. Okay? And this tree can be also written in linear form. See here, the outermost is yes. Yes will come here. Inside the yes, we are having NP followed by VP. Okay? NP followed by VP. So, under this NP, we are having article and noun. See, article and noun. Okay? Article is every and noun is wampus. Okay? So, every and wampus are the terminal symbols. And here, yes, NP, article, noun, VP, verb, these are all non-terminal symbols. Non-terminal symbols. That is, the terminal symbols are original words. Terminal symbols are original words, right? By using the grammar of this particular language, E not, we can generate a wide range of English sentences. Uh, like John is in the pit, the wampus lives in 2 comma 2, that is digits here. And Mary is in Boston and the wampus is near 3 comma 2. Okay. So, likewise, we can generate almost all English sentences by using this grammar. The over generation and under generation of grammar. Uh, first, the over generation of grammar. It generates a sentence that are not grammatical. Okay, that means me go Boston. Me, it is object, isn't it? This is not subject. Okay, uh, so this is not grammatically correct. So the grammar generate a sentence which is not syntactically correct, then this is called as over generation grammar. When come to under generation grammar, there are many sentences of English that rejects. Okay, that means I think the wampus is smelly. But the given sentence is the wampus is smelly, isn't it? So, here there is no confidence here. Right? So, this is called as over generation and under generation of grammar. So far, we have seen the phrase structure grammar uh, from fourth unit natural language for communication. So, under this topic, we have seen uh, the generative cap capacity, that is, all the four types of grammars, recursively enumerable grammars, context-sensitive grammar, context-free grammar, regular grammar, and probabilistic context-free grammar. After that, we have seen the lexicon for language E0, grammar for language E0, phrase tree for a given sentence, and over-generation and under-generation of grammar. And in the next class, we will see another important topic from fourth unit. For more information, please go through our textbook. Thank you.